Some of my come to know rather well. A man that I respect very highly. Uh, a man who, for having been a Christian for only five years, knows a great deal about the Word of God and uh, about it from a very practical standpoint. He understands the power and the protection of Christ. The lives of those who trust Him. He's telling you about that. We're glad to have Johnny Todd back with us once again. God bless you, brother. Uh, last time I was here, I, I was sitting down inside to see how many people were here in the second service that I was here. Uh, the last time I was here in the second service. It's the young lady we prayed for after the service here. Uh, after the service, we prayed for a young lady about some problems. Since then, a few more things have happened around here. Uh, I don't know if the other young lady is here or not. I didn't pay attention when I came in, but uh, as I'm ministering today, I want to point out a very real thing. The witchcraft today argues that the power that they have is extra-century perception. Many Christians are now believing in witchcraft under the disguise of scientific terms, EFE, clairvoyancy, telekinesisism, parapsychology, so on, because that's acceptable. The scientists say it's so, so that's acceptable. The only problem is, today, and I want to point out through the Word of God that it was still going on in Jesus' time, and Paul ran across the person of this power. We're going to discuss this in a few minutes in the 16th chapter of Acts. And when Paul was done with this person, he was done with her by casting demons out of her, she no longer had that power. So I have a question for you today. If you're having psych, uh, psychic experiences, or your parents had psychic experiences, I really invite you to get a hold of the pastor or his staff after this meeting is over or over the next couple of weeks. I'm still putting very busy here because I'm leaving as soon as the service is over for the East Coast. But talk to him about it because when I was saved, I still contained all the psychic power that I had for two weeks. And I kept wondering what was going on. And my eyes still had kind of a look uh, as people that have been around witchcraft or been in witchcraft know the look I'm talking about. And my eyes still contained this look, and people in the church were wondering what was going on, although I was trying to live a Christian life very hard. wasn't really involved in sin, but I still had all this psychic phenomena happening around me. I was still very bothered with the things that I'd come out of and addicted to them. Not drugs, but the psychic part. And finally, the church decided if it was good enough for Paul, it was good enough for them, and... uh they took me off in a room and they prayed for me for about five hours. And they demanded that the spirits that I had allowed in myself through asking them to come in in witchcraft to leave. When I walked out of that room, I no longer had any psychic power whatsoever. So I don't care what Duke University or what the Inquirer or what the charismatic movement or what anybody else says about ESP or any psychic powers. You call the demons out, the psychic power stops. And witches have argued with me for five years over this. They said, weren't, didn't you have your psychic power when you were born? Yes, because the word of God says the sins of the parents are visited upon the children. And my parents were witches. And their parents were witches. And on down the line. And the witches that were born into witchcraft had that power. But now that they've gone evangelical, now that they're going out and winning people over who have never been in witchcraft, and their parents were not in witchcraft, they have to teach them how to gain psychic power because they didn't inherit the spirits of their parents. But I want to read some scripture for you. I don't want you to go away mad here. Turn with me, if you will, to Galatians chapter 5. I'm sure all Christians are very familiar with the fruit of the Spirit, but we need to know about the fruit of the flesh also. Verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft. If you have a Schofield or a modern version, it's wrong. In verse 20, it says sorcery. The word in the Greek is for witchcraft. Sorcery and witchcraft are different. Sorcery is the use of drugs. It is not witchcraft. In fact, the base word for it is the same word that pharmacist comes from. And it's the use, occult practice use of drugs to obtain supernatural powers. Witchcraft is different. Witchcraft is demonic worship. This is witchcraft. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, seduction, heresies, envies, murders, it goes on. Witchcraft is a fruit of the flesh, the flesh ruled by the devil. Go with me, if you will, to Deuteronomy 18. If you want to mark these in your Bible, mark them. 
When you're witnessing to somebody who is involved, particularly I want to point out something today. I'm not so interested in, in hitting on witchcraft as much as I am on hitting practices that for some reason the Christian church today, the liberal churches, sorry to say even some independent Baptists, will come up to me and say, this is all right. It's in the Word of God. It's all right. It's in the Word of God, but it's not all right. We're going to go over it. If you want a list of what the occult is, it's found in Deuteronomy 18, starting with verse 10. And these are abominations unto the Lord. These are things that make the Lord so angry that in the Old Testament, he ordered a death sentence, a stoning, outside the city if you were caught doing these things just once. Not a dozen times, once. Now, the reason for this was the Jews did not have what we call deliverance. They did not have the power to call demons out in the name of Jesus. They didn't have this yet. The blood hadn't been paid. So the power was not there to do this. Their answer was to take them outside the city and stone them to death. Because they knew that if you came in contact with a fortune teller, and you let a fortune teller tell your fortune, you obtained the same spirits from her that she had. They also knew that if you went to a medium and sat in a seance, you obtained the same spirits. If you went to an astrologer and had her do your chart, you received the same spirit. I want to give you an example. My foster mother, when she wrote a book, she said that over every chart that she did, astrology charts, she used to work for the LA Times and do the charts for them. She said over every personal chart that she did, she would light candles and demand that spirits from the underworld enter those charts so that when the person took the charts, they would be under her control. Okay, when she wrote her book, she did the same thing to her book, and she demanded that a demon enter every book that came off the press so that the person reading the book would be addicted to the world of the occult. And all writers on the occult do the same thing. All right? Now, let's read what the definitions of these are. Since we're reading the King James, I will stop and I will tell you. There's many repeats. Some of the words mean the same thing. There shall not be... How many of you have got Schofield with you? Okay, you're going to be a little confused as we go along here. He changes them quite a bit. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. That's not walking on coals. The old form of human sacrifice in the Old Testament done into Baal was to take your child and throw them into the flames to be burned alive as a sacrifice in the Baal. That's what it's talking about. Sacrifice, and a lot of it goes on. Or that uses divination. I'm, if you are going to be embarrassed about it, you don't have to do it, but if you'd like to be honest, it might help some of the others who aren't going to be honest. How many of you have ever had your fortune told, or even with playing cards as a joke at a party, or went to a fortune teller, or anything like this? How many of you have had it done? That's divination. Parapsychology calls it clairvoyance. They like to change it a little. Okay? That's divination. That's fortune telling without the use of familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are spirit guides, the witches believe, have, are spirits of people who have died. We know from the word of God they're demonic spirits. They're the angels that fell with Lucifer. This is without them. This is using so-called EFT. They're inside them talking. They're giving them the knowledge, and the cards have definitions to add to it. Most people think when a person turns a card over, that card has a definition. Most people will tell you that you use the tarot cards or playing cards, which, by the way, were made to cast spells with and tell fortunes before Hoyle ever came around and invented poker. Okay? In fact, there are some witches who won't use the tarot cards because the playing cards are older and more powerful. But they usually get psychic pictures besides the definitions. There's much power to that, and that's why God said, no, you don't need it. You have my word, you don't need this thing. The next one is an observer of time. Anybody can shout it out real quick, what does it mean? Astrology. How many of you right now believe astrology is all right for a Christian? Raise your hand. How many of us have followed astrology? Now that means when the L.A. Times comes in, you just can't wait to open it up and look at it, Okay. I do see the other sister around. She knows what I mean. She was addicted to it. All right. Is astrology addiction? It's addiction. She was hooked on it just the same as a heroin addict. She had to have a spirit cast out of her before she could stop reading. She was that addicted. She went home burning it all, right? That's when she got free with destroyed it. Okay.
okay? There's demons involved in this. People argue with me that astrology is all right because the wise men were astrologers. No, they were following a star that had appeared in heaven. They were astronomers, not astrologers, okay? Astrologers say that the stars destined you, once you are born, you are going to stay that way. No matter what happens in your life, you can never change. The Word of God says that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can change. That's why witches find it so hard to believe in the Christian faith because they don't understand it. There's no miracle in their life. That's why when they meet me, they can't understand it. I've got a picture in my billfold that we found by accident going through some belongings of myself about uh, a year after I became a grand druid. I want to show it to the pastor later. I didn't even recognize myself. That's the difference and myself now and then. They don't understand the miracle change. It changes you physically, it changes you spiritually. But according to astrology, that's impossible. You stop becoming a Scorpio and a Taurus when you become a Christian. I find it very beautiful when somebody walks up to me and says, what sign you are? I said, the sign of the blood of Jesus. That's all you have to say. You're not a set personality. If that's so, then the Word of God is a lie because it says you're supposed to grow in the Word of God and have the fruit of the Spirit, and that's the only sign you should have, is Galatians 5. All right? Or an enchanter, that's a hypnotist. How many of you have been hypnotized? I've heard Christians going around now, Christian ministers, using hypnotists to minister to people. Don't believe it. It was outlawed in the time of God, and if it's called hypnotism now, and if it's called enchantment then, it's still the same thing. It's still the money car, and the Word of God says, uh-uh. Okay? Or a witch, I think that's self-explanatory. That's the person who casts spells on other people and controls them with their mind. Parapsychology calls it telekinesis. Whether it's making you do something with their mind or bending the fork for television's sake, it's still the same thing. A charmer, a charmer is style of a wish. It's a lesser degree. A consulter with familiar spirits. You'll find it on down in the here. A uh, consulter with familiar spirits is a medium. That is somebody who asks the spirits to guide them. How many of you have used the Ouija board? That's the consulter of familiar spirits. How many of you have made the mistake of letting somebody, or you've done it yourself, swing the button over your hand to find out if you're going to have a boy or a girl? They laugh about it, but it goes on. It's so strange those babies always have the worst problems after they're born because they've done that. That's consulting with familiar spirits. That's what happened in the 16th chapter. Okay? Or a wizard. That's a male witch. Not warlock. Wizard. Or a necromancer. That's somebody who uses familiar spirits to tell the future. Definitely like the Ouija board. Okay? Consult a familiar spirit to be more like a medium. A necromancer would be the... Somebody using the Ouija board to gain knowledge from demonic spirits, okay? For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. That's why he wiped out the land the Jews went in, so that wouldn't touch them, because that's what was going on. And all of the time the Jews dwelt in that land, they were surrounded by people who did this. Now the Christians are surrounded about it. Welcome to the club. Turn with me to the 16th chapter of Acts. If you run across the witch, I settle the whole thing. You run across somebody who's in the occult, whether they're witchcraft or not, and they want to argue with you that it's perfectly all right, that ignorance disagree with it, break open your Bible. Of course, witches don't believe in the Bible, so you won't get very far with them. But for the Christians who want to play games with you, who want to say this is right and that is right, and they were born with a power, they were a little ex, they were a little spatial. You know, this is the story. See, the same story that the devil used in the garden for Adam and Eve is the story that he used the world with today that makes the occult grow. I'm going to make you a god. He can't even make himself a god. How's he going to make you a god? Remember what was going to make him a god? Knowledge. And the knowledge of the occult is spreading because people think that with it, they are more special than the person next to them. And that's why they become involved. Okay? 16, reading with me. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, divination, fortune telling. Possessed with a spirit of fortune telling. So for those that like to turn cards and say it's EFP, you read them this met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. 
How many have heard of Jean Dixon? What does she call herself? A soothsayer. Where does she say she gets this from? God. That's blast came from a soothsaying, looking into the future and prophesying. Satan counterfeit of what the prophets of God did. Satan has never originated anything in his life. You can better believe it that if it's in the occult, the Christian church is either doing it today or they were doing it. And God has passed on to a new thing. But God did it once. The devil's not, he is not creating anything. He can only counterfeit. Most interesting, I'm glad that Jesus left us one sign that the whole world would know we were his. Because it's the one sign the devil can't imitate. He does not have anything inside him to counterfeit it. It's called love. That's why you have to have the death threat and the occult to keep going. Then the same, the same follow Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. I've had hundreds of people come to me and tell me the Ouija board is correct, fortune tellers are all right, because they had just gotten saved, and a year before, some medium or the Ouija board or something told them that the Christian way was the right way. Most of the time, when I get to talking to them, I found out they never got born again anyway. They just decided to switch over to being a Christian. The devil knows the blood of Jesus shed. He knows it's the right way. I've had mediums get up and interrupt the service and stand there and preach a message about how God was the most powerful God because the devil was not afraid of losing the person. I've had them come up and ask for deliverance and have the demons removed as a challenge because they did not want them removed. They were not going to leave because the people didn't want them out. And the devil was not afraid of having the person stand up and say it. But Paul left this person alone for several days. If you read it, she did this many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, not Mary, not Yahweh, no other name, not Diana or Kurnos, Jesus Christ. And it was said by a person who knew him personally, a personal relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ, it came out of her, and it came out the same hour. In some translations, it says the same moment. And when her master saw the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Saul and drew them into the marketplace to the rulers. When it happened, when the demon was gone, their gains were gone because she couldn't tell fortune anymore. She didn't have that special little power that the other people went and paid her to tell about because it was gone. It was of the devil and it was gone. So when people come up to you and say that this person said it on the Phil Donahue so or Mike Douglas had somebody else on it and so on and so on and so on, there was just a big controversy in the L.A. County area about legalizing fortune telling without a license and witchcraft and everything. The reason being was the great press, so-called great psyche, had told the L.A. police department that if they would do this, he would come and tell them who the strangler was. I'm sure the devil will think on the devil. He doesn't care. So this was the deal, and they even sent a witch out from Ed Colvin to sit there and cast a spell over the city council, or county council, whatever it was, as they were voting on this thing, she was waving her wand around and her incense in the air. But at the same time, there were Christians praying outside the building. And I don't know where the witches' minds were. When it was over, they told the newsman, they said, well, why didn't your spell work? And they said, all some dumb Christians were outside praying against us. Well, that's saying the Christians are stronger. We know that. I'm surprised they didn't have a revival in witchcraft right then and there. I mean, three Christians was all was outside praying. They had about eight coven all through the area casting spells on the city council, and all the Christians were doing were pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over the councilmen, whether they were Christians or not. It's about time we stand up and start taking authority over the principalities and powers. Read Ephesians six twelve. That's what runs the area. And we need to take authority over it and stand up. Now, when I was here before, I talked on the Illuminati. I talked on the physical kingdom of the devil. But there is a spiritual kingdom, too. And without the spiritual kingdom, that physical kingdom wouldn't function. Now, I'm going to take a few, a few quick moments here. When we come back to questions and answers in the second session, ask anything you want, whether it be on the Illuminati or whatever. If I ain't got the answer, I won't be able to answer you. But I'll try. There is a book that we have worked we went down to Chick Publications for two days last week. It's been almost six hours of just working the story out and researching in the Word and bringing out documents. It's going to be called The Angel of Light. It's going to be out in about six months. It's not going to pull any strength 
The last time we had a little debate about Mormonism in here, when I was in here the last time, we were, Jack had the top experts on the Mormon church come in. They're going to hit the Mormon church. They're going to hit anything that has the devil in his earthly and spiritual kingdom in this book. Now, I want to bring it out because I'm asking you to pray about it. Pray for it. They're having a lot of problems with it. They feel that if they do this book, they may never be able to do another book because it doesn't pull any strings. Right. The pastor knows a few things that are coming out in it. The other thing I want to bring out real quick is that we have been given the land for the retreat that I mentioned when I was here the last time. There were some buildings standing on this under construction. Somehow, within a two-week period of time, they found out about the construction of this area, and they went and pulled the buildings down to the ground. That's how I was in Sacramento, and which came up to me and says, we know you've got the land. Don't try to build it. We need your prayers for this thing. We need this thing built by March, by the time I return from the East Coast, because going out there, we know there's going to be people saved. We have no place to send them if they're in danger. No place at all that they'll be safe. So we need your prayers. If you have building supply, if you have finance, if you have anything, see the pastor or see Tom Collins and get this material to them. This brother Tom's going to go ahead and build it while we're gone. It's there. We need concrete block. We need two by fours. We need we need construction people. We need everything. So if you don't know brother Tom, pastor ask me, and he'll put you in touch with him. Okay. How much time do we have, pastor? Let's take questions and answers. Anybody have a question? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> they know, but uh, there's no use broadcasting it. It's in California, and it's about 55 miles from here. It's in the mountains. Yeah. We receive them in courier pouches, usually carried by the U.S. State Department. Uh, the only time we received orders like that didn't come from the tribunal. <laughs> they came in Sabbath, where Lucifer would appear. But usually he appears... Remember, too many people got the devil spread out all over the place. He is one being. He's not God. He can only be... If Lucifer's standing here this very moment, he's nowhere else in the whole universe. So usually he set, he's at the Rothschild house to give them orders or he appears at what is called the Golden Don Coven. One thing I've got to add to you. It's come up too much. We're bringing it out in the new book. How many of you read C.S. Lewis? How many of you read J.R.R. Tolkien? Burn them. I'm going to repeat this. Burn them. No, burn them. Burn them. Lewis was supposed to have been one to the Lord by Tolkien. Tolkien was supposed to be a Christian. The witches call all those books their Bible. They have to read them before they can be initiated, and it is well known in England and published in witchcraft books that they both belong to Rothschild's private coven. Tolkien's son is up for vote in three months to become the leader of the Illuminati. They're not Christian books. We have found books that are out, outside of the spirit-type letters that are on the gods where Tolkien talks of the gods Diana and Kurnos and others as being the real god. Well, not Tolkien, Lewis. C.S. Lewis was supposed to be a Christian, and those books are sold in Christian stores. Burn them. They're witchcraft books. Any questions yet? <laughs> oh, how many times has that question come up this week? Without TV, the Illuminati would never gain control of the world. There's symbols on the TV sets that are hypnotic symbols. You can talk to anybody that's a hypnotist, and they can tell you, why do you think that you can sit there and somebody can scream in your ear half the time, and you don't know they're screaming at you? There are things that are burnt into your mind through the TV sets that are subtle, that are symbols and words and action. And we've talked with people that know of these things that go on, and they have confirmed this. Besides, two of the major networks in this country are completely Illuminati-owned, lock, stock, and barrel, ABC and CBS. And NBC is 90% Illuminati. And then most of the Christian television I don't watch because they receive large donations from them to tone the programs down. So uh, Jack Chick asked me what I thought about him going on TV on a regular series. I said he'd never get there. Try getting a serious Bible-believing program on TV that preaches hardcore gospel. It'll never happen. If you think Jerry Farwell is hardcore gospel, I have a little piece of news for you. No way. The girl that took my place as Grand Druid, Lavina, is a member of his church, and her parents are on his staff. No way. Yes. Yeah. The defense, I never went to court. It never got to court. That's simple. It never got to court. Okay? It's just this. I never got arrested. Brenner, guy, Bob Brenner owned Brenner Enterprises that was a covering network for us and got one ticket. One time on a Cadillac outside his nightclub, and the police officer was looking for work the next day, because he should have known that was his car. Yes. 
You can just repeat them. Okay. I'll set off this way because I can't completely hear him. I think I understand. I, okay. I didn't. I was going to answer a different question. Okay. UFOs. The occult teaches UFOs are angels of light who deceive the world into believing that we will later be invaded from outer space so that you can have a one-world army looking that way, considering they feel that one of these days they're going to be invaded from outer space, and they really believe they can defeat that invasion coming from outer space. Now, how many of you know what invasion I'm talking about? They do, too, and they really feel they can defeat it. That's the purpose. If you'll notice, all of the so-called landings and softer bases are in prime pyramid or cold areas such as the Bermuda Triangle, over the pyramid, over the, the gap in the North Pole, places like this. These are sacred pit openings to the occult. Okay? Any, any other? Yeah. The warlock is Scotch Gaelic, meaning backslider or traitor. The Catholic Church applied it to the first Protestant. Okay? It never was applied to witchcraft. The Satanists used it for shock value in this country. Television's added to it. Which is, you see, witch is from the word Wicca, which is the name of their religion, which means wise. And witch is the female version, and wizard is the male version. Wizard means wise one or teacher, and witch is wise one or leader. That's why the women are the leader, the men are the leader. Okay? That's the term. Warlock is the, uh, in fact, if you go to England, you won't even hear it. And that's where the stronger witchcraft is. It's just more or less used in this country, and the Satanists use it for shock value, because... If you, you go up and you say, I'm a wizard, nobody knows what you're talking about. Because if you wish, you go up and say, I'm a warlock, everybody knows, well, oh, he's something great, you know. So that's why they've used it, and that's how spread it. But warlock isn't a witch term. It actually was a term applied to the first Protestants in Scotland and Ireland. Any others? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, well, you're talking about, okay, she, she asked me an occult question. She asked if I know anything about the angel that was supposed to have given a princess in Ireland a Blarney Stone. This is Catholic and witchcraft teachings together. I'm sure it was a demon, okay? The, the princess was supposed to be the daughter of Bridget, which was the mother goddess in Ireland, which the Catholics made a saint. The Catholics, everywhere they went, they always turned the old gods into saints, so they keep the pagan following following them. Okay, a couple more real quick. Yes, I can't hear you on the last one. I can't hear you on the last one. I don't know a thing about it. I can't answer it. <laughs> I've never heard of it before. Yeah. Yes, I am. I haven't seen it, but I'm... People believe there's two different worlds out there checking this world out because we've had violent contact and we've had non-violent contact. Well, you see, the teachings from the Necromonicon, which, by the way, I read scriptures in the Mormon Bible that are directly out of the Necromonicon. I'll have to turn this over to him real quick. All right. And the Necromonicon, it teaches, it starts, the first scripture in it is out of Genesis, and that's the witch's Bible, uh, the Necromonicon. It says that the sons of God came down and knew the daughters of Adam and they were giants. All right? They teach that we were, when the human race first started, great wise ones from another world came here and started a race and intermated, and that's where the witches came from. Well, the Mormons, of course, teach that Adam came down with a wife and started everything. Where did he come from? So it's all still basing on this thing, and now they're believing they're coming back and checking up on us, and soon we'll have a government of world peace because they'll help do it all. <coughs> Thank you, Johnny. And remember again, Johnny Todd will be back uh, at 11.15. Our church service will be over at promptly 11.05 this morning, so we will give him full time. And uh, <coughs> the floor will be open for questions and for answers during that session. So we invite you to stay through the preaching service. Uh, just before we uh, dismiss you, we'll give you a break of about five minutes. I'd like to make uh, known these books. This is the book called The Broken Cross. How much is that? Thirty-nine cents, three for a dollar. This is the story of uh, Manitou Springs, Colorado, about witchcraft in that town. A true story. Information provided by Johnny Todd. You'll want to get that and read it. And then secondly, there's another one just like this called The Gift. A very excellent booklet. You ought to have both of them. <coughs> then we have some books on on uh, masonry. The last time Johnny Todd was here, he mentioned the fact that the oath, uh, which is taken by the first degree mason, called the Inner Apprentice Mason, is exactly the same except for, I think, one phrase. Uh, with the oath taken by a person being initiated into witchcraft, and that oath, along with the oath of the second degree mason and the first and third degree mason, is also in this particular book, along with the uh, ritual and the initiation of the first three degrees of the mason. First of the same. All right, this little book by Morgan, who was killed, by the way, for writing this book. The moment this book hit the press, he was kidnapped by masons and, and drowned in the East.
Another book, this is a classic. Uh, this book, by the way, is only $1.50. Uh, this book is, is perhaps a classic. It was taken to the Supreme Court by Masonry, and they tried to pre prevent this book from being published. It's entitled Freemasonry and Interpretation by M. L. Wagner. This book is only $4. Uh, it's been reproduced by Dr. Crane's Clandestine Press. I paid ten dollars for my copy. It's exactly the same book. Actually, it's a better, better edition. And this book you ought to have. There are just a few of these on sale in the back. Another excellent book by one of America's great evangelists of 150 years ago, Charles E. Finney, is entitled Freemason. He was what was called a bright mason. He was a Masonic attorney. He was saved by the grace of God by Christ out of masonry and wrote this book exposing it. It's only two dollars. Freemason by Charles Finney. Another book by a man who was first a Roman Catholic, then a bright mason by the name of, uh, uh, Romani, uh, entitled Maha Bone. <clears throat> any, any Masons here in the third degree will recognize that word Maha Bone. It's a secret word that uh, cannot be given above uh, a whisper and then in the five points of fellowship. This is a very amazing book by a man who was a bright and uh, uh, very informed Mason who later was saved by Christ out of Masonry and then he wrote this book exposing both Masonry and Romanism. Maha Bone is $3. Another book that gives a political overview <clears throat> of the Involvement in the secret societies in world uh, conspiracy, building toward a world empire or world dictatorship, as this called The Christian and the Other Religion. It's only one dollar, a very interesting booklet. And then there are a few books back there, such as The Naked Capitalist by Scout or Scousen, or Scousen, Scousen it is. Uh, a book, just a couple of those, they're two dollars each worth having. A book entitled Textbooks on Trial by uh, Norma Gabler, who spoke here back in the early fall. Uh, she revealed what's taking place in the textbooks in the schools. Television was brought out. The schools were mentioned. Uh, people wonder why is the world moving toward world dictatorship? Why are freedoms being taken away? Uh, what's happening to our young people? Textbooks and trials will tell you a lot about that. That book is a hardback, a book that is five dollars. But those books are all Please. in the Johnny All right. Before we take questions and answers, and the pastor will be up here monitoring so they get on the tape so everybody will know what the question is. I've had so many complaints. <laughs> what everybody's asking, so we'll do that in a minute. Please bear with me for a minute. You might want some pencil and paper for what's coming up. Uh, you can decide as you go. How many of you have read this? All right. As I repeat, nothing produced by ship publication is a book. It is a track. It is meant for souls. All right? Now, I'm trying to set up something where every student at this school will get one. How many are in junior high or high school in this school? All right, I want to see if you know what's going on. I talked with the principal. I talked with the pastor. I know what's going on in your school. I want to find out if there'll be a teenager honest enough to stand up and say they know it. How many know about the spiritualism group, the Ouija board group that is going on after school hours? How many teenagers have kind of been invited over to this thing or have gotten the word on it around the school that know what's going on? Any of you... Have any of you been approached in the school about this? No? All right. If you are, please go to the principal. Please go to the pastor. Or there are teenagers who are fooling with this in the school and are trying to spread it. And we're going to, or the pastor and the principal are going to take care of it. I told them who I've spotted and knows is fooling around with this. So I, I want to bring that up real quick before we go on. The next thing is on this book. In three months, this book has already been rewritten once. I'm sorry we don't have the rewritten. We've corrected a lot of it to where it reads just witchcraft now, and the Satanism part is not in it, which makes it a better track for our purposes. But in the back, this whole back sheet will be redone in three months. I only have three months. It'll about the end of April, I guess, or maybe four months. This whole back sheet will be redone. The salvation message here will be put up at the top, and this whole space here will be on the bottom, will be a list of phone numbers and halfway houses and churches throughout the United States that people who have death sentences on their heads that one out of the Illuminati and out of the occult can contact. That's why I'm going east. For five years, we have prayed and we have sought to get in the state in New England and Florida and so on where Grand Druids live, where the leaders live. And we have always been barred mainly by interference through the charismatic churches. Well, now God has opened the door to the independent Baptists that nobody can close. We didn't try to go through the charismatic churches, but the charismatic churches there opposed it in such a, a way that the other churches were afraid to do anything. Now this door is open, and we're going to be setting houses up while we're there. I need, this is the Southern California contact point right here. We need counselors who are willing, and we prefer husband and wife, 
who are willing, and we need where they have an extra bedroom or can make room in their house, that can take a girl or a boy in one at a time if this church is reached by phone or help and can watch over these people from two to three days. This is 24 hours a day.